I presume you're here in order to learn of Magecraft. I'll have you know, there's no room for the weak-willed in this course. And despite your best efforts, the sorcery of our time is but a fraction of what it once was in the Age of Gods. Much of the craft is established through pedigree, and the culture of mages is riddled with deception and moral depravity. That said, if you insist, I shall do my best to educate you in this miserable, yet fascinating world. In our previous lesson in Magecraft, I covered the various thaumaturgical elements and the concept of origins. It is nigh impossible to discuss Magecraft without understanding them. The same can be said of today's lesson, which will provide an overview of the fundamental energy we mages use, mana. Also called prana, or magical energy, mana is a form of energy produced by the world. For our purposes, it is the life force of our planet Earth, as well as that of other celestial bodies. Generally, it is found in the very atmosphere around us, though it was certainly more prevalent during the Age of Gods. The many nature spirits of that time fed off this energy and served Gaia, the planet's will. Before humankind developed further in the realm of science, mages benefited greatly from the sheer density of mana in the air allowing for magecraft to be more easily performed on a large scale. Certainly, mana still remains even in our modern era, but mages have obviously become less reliant on it. Let us not forget, however, that humans are a part of the planet. As such, we too possess our own mana, our very life force used as energy. The proper name for this energy is Ode, Living organisms generate this energy from their own magic circuits, replenishing it whenever depleted. While Ode is more readily accessible, it amounts to much less than what can be found in the atmosphere. Thus, Ode is considered to be the lesser source, while the mana of the planet is the greater source. Even with abundant atmospheric mana, the energy used for spells must be converted through magic circuits before it can be released. Ode might sound quite convenient, but there is a reason mages during the Age of Gods were far superior. The amount of Ode stored by Amagus is so little that it is only useful for small-scale spells that hardly interact with the environment. Reinforcement Magecraft is one such spell. It makes sense that an inept Magus like Shiro Emiya found this to be the only spell he could formally conjure. Another example? would be Rin Tosaka's Gondo shots. Even the best mages merely use their Ode as a starting point for larger spells. They still rely on mana from the atmosphere to maintain said spells. Point being, there is only so much a mage can do on their own. But just how much can a mage rely on their Ode? As it turns out, the amount of Ode stored by a mage can be measured with reasonable accuracy, quantified as units of magical energy you may be surprised by the contrast in capacity between mages. Many of the famous mages you're familiar with are exceptionally well endowed. The average Magus from an ordinary bloodline can store 25 units of magical energy. Shiro is generally able to store 20 units, but has achieved as much as 30 at full maturity. The Tosaka daughters, Rin and Sakura, were born with splendid bodies. They can store 500 units, with their maximum output being 1,000. This is one of the main reasons why Kaneth Elmaloy Archibald belittled his student Waver Velvet for trying to negate the importance of lineage and heredity. There is hardly any room for comparison, and explains why mage families, like the motto, are terrified of weakening over generations. Tragically, in Sakura's case, much of her ode is devoured by the crestworm slithering through her flesh. The Tosaka are powerful for the modern era, but pale in comparison to Medea, a mage from the Age of Gods. A single blast of her light consumes three times Shiro's capacity, and she fires them off in waves of ten at a time without delay. Essentially, she can spend Reen's highest capacity and simply shrug it off. In a humble attempt to compensate, modern mages often supplement their magecraft with training in the martial arts. Heroic spirits also have an Ode capacity. 
While this capacity is high, a servant's ode does not automatically regenerate. Instead, it is replenished by their master. Artoria Pendragon, when contracted with Shiro, survives off of 1300 units of energy. This is detrimental, considering Shiro lacks the ability to replenish that mana through conventional means. In her first day serving him, Artoria spent 250 units, and the majority of that remaining balance was spent using Excalibur to defeat Medusa and her Pegasus. This strained her to the point where she could hardly keep her balance. Thankfully, while Shiro's contract with Artoria couldn't forward mana to her, he had another way of transferring that mana. The Ode in a Mage has a tendency to blend in with their bodily fluids, namely blood and semen. Even when such fluids leave the body, that mana is retained for a time. Mages hard on their luck sometimes sell their mana-infused fluids for profit. Thanks to this peculiarity, with Reen's guidance, Shiro learned that he could replenish Saber's mana by having sexual intercourse with her. This intimacy is a critical part of certain mage rituals, and is most effective when both parties are at ease with one another. To allow Shiro the chance to conjure his unlimited blade works, Reen Tosaka relied on an intimate ritual that allowed Shiro to draw from her ode in his final battle against Gilgamesh. The less sensual approach is to have one mage drink the other's blood. Of course, this isn't always consensual. Shinji Mato is even less adept than Shiro, and for him to maintain Medusa as his loner servant, he had her drink human blood. Rare circumstances allow mages to store outrageous quantities of ode. Michael Roa Valdemyong was a vampire who tricked the true ancestor Arcoade Brunstud into drinking his blood, turning him into an extremely powerful dead apostle ancestor. As Arcoade continually hunted and killed him, Roa reincarnated into various bodies, and at one time took control of a French girl, Elysia. Even after being slain once more by Arcoade, being free from Roa's direct control, Elysia's body remained immortal and powerful, able to regenerate so long as Roa continued to reincarnate. Thanks to this undead connection, Elysia, later called Ciel, has a capacity of 2,500 units of Ode. Sakura, when connected to the Greater Grail, manifesting under the influence of Anger Mainyu, contained as much as one trillion units. The last aspect of mana I wish to speak about is the concept of Ley Lines. Atmospheric mana is produced by the planet, but the concentration of that mana is uneven. Mana happens to be more dense along magical Ley Lines. Unseen to the naked eye, the Earth itself has a network of paths through which mana travels, similar to the blood vessels in the human body. Mages make use of these ley lines when performing large-scale spells to capitalize on their density. A particularly strong ley line flows through Fuyuki, Japan, which is why it was chosen as the site for the Heaven's Feel ritual. The monks at Ryudo Temple sensed this as a spot of spiritual activity, this land is seized by Medea as a home base, exclusively because it is situated over a ley line. That said, ley lines can also prove to be dangerous. The Mages Association makes regular attempts to maintain and stabilize them. Beyond being flows of magical energy, the ley lines also happen to be spots through which worlds can be traversed. The cave within Mount Enzo, the Ten no Sakazuki, for instance, is the location where the Ainsworth family infiltrated Ilya's world to retrieve Miu. In summation, mana is the lifeblood of celestial bodies, including Earth. It flows from ley lines and scatters through the atmosphere. Because humans are part of the planet, they too have mana, an internal source called Ode that is continually regenerated by a mage's magic circuits. Rudimentary spells can be cast exclusively from a mage's Ode, but magecraft on a large scale requires mages to tap into the Earth's mana, which is tragically depleted since the end of the Age of Gods. This concludes today's lesson. In the future, I wish to discuss the key to a mage's lineage, the Magic Circuit. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell as if it were your waifu. That way you'll never miss out on all of my anime content, lore videos, live streams, and Holy Waifu Wars polls. My vids are struggling to get featured, so that bell is absolutely critical. If you want to support me directly, check out my Patreon, or consider donating via Super Chat. And as always, celebrate your fandom!